I'd like to give a special shout out to uh, a very generous subscriber, Dwayne. Sent me the static display prop for my F4U Corsair 60 size top flight kit. I'll put this to good use when I'm not flying that, which probably a lot. Thanks, Dwayne. I really appreciate it. You're too generous. Welcome back to another fun-filled episode of Frank's Model Aviation Workshop. This is episode 17 in the build series of the Top Flight 60 size P40E Warhawk. This episode we're going to be concentrating on the tail wheel section and uh, the formers in the rear of the uh, aircraft. And I'll uh, bring you in close. Last episode, I said something about gluing that stringer in a curve so it'll it'll be easier to to bend toward the formers. I'll show you what I mean by that. Bring you in close and show you, and then we'll get started. Before we get started, though, if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. Hit that notification bell so that you can be notified of new uploads for the series and like and share my videos. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you and uh, let's get started. So here's what I was talking about when I glued those stringers in bent. You can see they still have a curve, but when you squeeze on them, it don't take any effort to get them to squeeze in where they're supposed to be. If you were to take this and glue that stringer to a straight fuselage side, you'd be fighting that glue joint to get it to pull in and it would, it would take more effort. So I don't know, it kind of makes sense to me to kind of glue it in that pre-curved uh, position. And as you can see, if you if I pan up, you can see it's already wanting to turn in on, on itself. So we'll get started. Uh, I gotta get that tail wheel section going. And uh, <clears throat> I wanna do the Z bend right here instead of using the ball joint. So I'm gonna have one continuous push rod with a Z-Bend soldered right there in a 90 degree with the uh, tail wheel. And the way I'm gonna do that is this plate here that gets glued in now, I'm going to glue it in after I get it flipped over because I need to do that solder. You know, I need to wrap that and solder it. So we'll see what it goes. I might have to, uh, yeah, I think, I think that, that'll be good. We'll see what happens, but that's my plan right now. Could change, but we'll see. Okay, so the plans say to drill 564 inch holes in these two dents here and one eighth holes in these two. So I'll get my drill bits ready and I'll take you in and we'll drill those holes out. Okay, I'm going to start off by doing the 564 inch right here. And once again, I'm going to tell you, if you want neat holes in the backside, you know, if you want it to be clean, you should always drill against something wood like that, set it down. And that way when you go through it, it's gonna continue to drill through there and give you a clean hole. So let's see if I can do this and you still be able to see, because I gotta have my arm here. And this will be loud, so I'll adjust this volume on my video. Show you what I mean, but here's the there's the holes in the front. On the back, they're perfect as well. So I'm, now I'll change that out and do the eighth inch.
damage hold. Clean on both sides. Once again, I'm dealing with a warped piece of wood that I'm going to have to straighten before I glue anything together. Same thing. Going to be using the iron and just try to straighten it out. Previous videos, I showed how to do that. And uh, I'm going to do that, and then I'll be back with you. Okay, plans say to glue this tail wheel platform onto former eight perpendicular. So I got my little machine block here to keep it straight. I'm going to run some thin CA in there to set it. Then I'll run some medium CA to put a, CA to put a uh, fillet or fillet, whatever you want to call it. And we'll set that aside to dry. Make sure it's pressed in. And just run a little bit of CA. I'm going to take some medium CA, which I'm running out of, and put that down here. Just let that dry and then we'll move on to the next step okay the next step on the plans is I got to take this 5 8 inch brass tube put it on the on the tail gear up here by this 90 smash that end silver solder it to the landing gear so uh, that's what I'll do and I'll get you in as close as I can to show you what you'll need for silver soldering, you know, a pair of pliers to smash the tube. You need some stay clean flux or any kind of flux, some acicore wire or solder. I'm using a 160 watt heat, uh, soldering gun from Radio Shack, which they're no longer around. You need some alcohol to clean up before you solder, some sanding paper to sand where you want to want the solder to go and then clean it because you want to roughen that up so the solder has something to stick to. So I'll get you in here close and we'll uh, get this soldered on. Okay, I'm going to try to keep <clears throat> everything in within, you know, your scope of vision here. I got it as close as I can get to where I can show you everything. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sand this, this area here on the landing gear, the tail gear, so that the solder has something to stick to. And I just basically twist it and give it a bunch of little scratches and stuff. Kind of like that. Can't really do that to, uh, you can't get in there to scratch up the tube unless you have like something really small and I don't have any well I mean I do have something I got this little needle file but it ain't gonna get in there very far but I'll give it some scratches good enough so what we'll do now I'm gonna alcohol the landing gear and that brass with a paper towel. That just cleans it off. I'm going to set this up to where that landing gear, where the uh, 
This thing is at 90 degrees. And this is gonna come over here and hold that brass too. You almost need one of these helping hands if you're gonna do this kind of saw, any kind of soldering with a gun. So the plan say to put this on and flatten that edge. So I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna let's see, flatten it out. Basically like that. And this is gonna be 90 degrees. <clears throat> the flat is gonna be 90 degrees to the landing gear, so I'm gonna double check it. All right. Okay, so now we'll just position all this. I'm just gonna bring this over to hold it. <clears throat> I want to make sure that it stays 90 degrees at all times. So I'm going to double check it again. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a little bit of that flux on there before I put that on. Okay, clean it a little bit. And now what you want to do is, is you want to heat this up, heat this gun up till it's red hot before you put it on there. see it get red hot. And you just 
just sit down on there. When that flux starts to boil, wick your solder in there. There it goes. That's one soldered piece. That stinks. Let that cool for a minute before you give it the tug test. Pretty sure it's going to be good. These are <clears throat> permagrit needle files, by the way. They sell them at uh, uh, Violet Jets or something like that. Worth every penny. Now this set screw here, I'm gonna put some blue Loctite on it. So it doesn't back off later. Put blue Loctite on it and stuff that you want to get apart. The red Loctite is otherwise known as never come off juice. It will uh, it will glue your stuff. It will never come off. Okay, the next step is to drill the hole in that in this flat piece. If it ever wants to focus. Anyway, as you can see. If I line that up, my flat section starts right where that ball goes. But since I'm doing a Z bend, I'm gonna drill that hole right there and make my Z bend. And I'm gonna cut all that extra off because I won't need it and it'll grind into the fuselage side anyway. So that's my goal. I'm gonna drill that hole, cut my Z bend, and move on to the next step. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and drill this 16th inch hole right at that flat. Hopefully this drill won't walk on me. Okay. Next step, I'm going to do that Z bend. Okay, so I have me some uh, 16th push rod. Check it to make sure. Yep, it goes in the hole just nice. So I'm going to do me a Z bend on one end, 
then cut it off. These Z Bend pliers from Great Plains are awesome. Gives you a perfect Z Bend every time. Now I'm going to test fit this. See that Z bend is going to work. Because this push rod that I'm going to be using, it's, it's going to be straight. What I need to do is Mark that, bend it, make it straight, because it's going to have to be cut off up here by the servo anyway. And I'll have to bring you over. I know you're not seeing any of this. As you can see, the, <clears throat> the push rod they want you to use is super long. This is going to be the servo that's going to be powering the, uh, no, actually, it's the next one over. It's gonna be powering it. But anyway, down here, I'm gonna make this one continuous deal. That Z-Bend will be wrapped right there and soldered. And it'll be trimmed up too as well, so. It's going to be soldered there. And what I'm going to do is when I go to do that, I'm not going to glue this plate in. I'm going to wait till after I have former eight in, seven, six, and five. They're all going to be in. The plastic push rod tube is going to be in. And I'm going to get this set up. However, I have to, and I'm going to take the fuselage off the off the table. I'll flip it over and do my soldering flipped over. Then, once I get it soldered, I'm going to flip it back over, put it on the table, pin it down, and you know line it up and put my plate in at that point. I may have to put the plate in, you know, glue it over here. Matter of fact, I might have to put the plate in flipped upside down because I don't think I'll be able to get it in once all these formers are, are glued in. It won't squeeze down in there, you know, behind this too. And what, another thing I got to do, I have to cut that push rod hole, the exit hole. Got to do that before I solder because that push rod is going to be in there. And once it's in there, it ain't going anywhere. I, I'll... I'll cut it long here, up here. You know, it's going to be fed down through the tube before I even solder this. So I'm going to have to deviate from the plans to do this Z-Bend trick in the tail. Uh, I know my buddy Mike Bayona is, he found some Dubro balls that snap really good into, uh, into that connector there. But the ones that come in the kit do not snap in good they're really loose and sloppy and they come undone they, they come unpopped so i mean you can do that use the dubro balls but I, I like this idea better because i think that it'll be a lot stronger and it and it, there's no way a z band's going to pop out of there and it's not coming unsoldered so that's the way i'm going to do it you guys do it the way you want to do it, and we are going to move on. Next step is to glue on this tailwheel bracket. So I started off trying to place it in there, <clears throat> and it's a 
really tight. So I'm going to squeeze some CA down in there. A little bit anyway. Try not to get any on your... Uh, Try not to get any on the uh, act or the actual pivot point there. I'm just gonna just squeeze a little bit in there. Try to make some room here. I'm uh, pushing in. And it says to screw this on with these sheet metal screws. You may be witnessing the destruction of a P40 if this uh, Z-Bend trick doesn't work. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put some CA around these little nylon deals here. and around those little uh, nubs of the screws that come through. It says to use epoxy, but I've used CA in the past, it works. And I'll, I'll let this set for a while before we move on. So there's that tail wheel bracket is glued on, screwed on. You also have to set this collar to the correct height because that's the height it's going to be whenever the push rod comes through. So that's that. We're getting there. Take your time, do a little pre-planning, and we'll see this thing come together. You watch. Okay, this section, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to try to do it just like that. Uh, you're supposed to put this stab support crutch in there, pin it to the plans, and then glue the fuselage sides to it. But if you pay attention to your lines back here on either side, Keep those even. You can take that out and glue F8 in. Now F8 is going to be running along the front edge of this line. You just want to, in my case, you just want to barely see that line. And it's got to be perpendicular. And I'm going to do a couple of uh, just look at it first. Make sure it looks even on both sides. Make any adjustments. This has to be perpendicular, so I gotta put this up against it. Looks pretty dang good. I'm just dry fitting right now. I'm not gluing anything. Make sure it's also flat to the plan. Oops, careful of your sheeting. Just 
like that. So that's how it's going to get glued in. I'm going to glue it in and uh, not do the stab center crutch yet until I get that all these forms in, the push rod in, because the push rod is going to be permanent. It's not going to be able to come out. So hopefully everything goes well from here on out. I can't, I have no other way of doing it. I don't have any Dubro balls, so. And I'm not going to the store right now, so. I want to see this work anyway, don't you? So before I, uh, before I glue this in, I'm going to cut out the push rod exit hole. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, the push rod exit hole goes right about here. And it's slightly, I don't know, an eighth or a sixteenth above the platform. So from one eighth on up, I'm gonna do like an oval cut there. Okay, what I'm gonna to attempt to do, and I really mean attempt, is I'm gonna to attempt to do that push rod exit right now. You can see where the push rod comes out. So if you come up from there, let me get my clear ruler, that'll help me a lot. So, push rod exit comes up right about here. So I'm gonna come in about a quarter of an inch. No, it's second, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna come up an eight, uh, three sixteenths. I'm gonna eyeball this other side. I can see it down through here. Technically. Better to do it small than large. You can always enlarge it, but what I want to do is cut this exit out and run my just bevel it basically like that just like the push rods going bevel it on either end so that way it'll be nice and clean and beveled I won't have to cut a big sloppy hole so that's what I'm gonna try to do like I said it's better to go small than big I guess No, I want to. I need to measure up. What is it? Now, when I measure up, I'm measuring for the center where the hole's going to go. And it looks to me like it's, that whole thing's 3 sixteenths, so. So 
So a quarter would be halfway, so. Boy, that's hard. This is just me being anal retentive. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna run a 16th inch drill bit, or maybe a flat 64. Right here. And I'm gonna do this one as well, but I think I'm gonna move it in just a hair. As you can see, I missed. I'm trying to. I'll just stay a little bit. Really hard to do that when it's glued or pinned to the table. Now I'm gonna have to. Uh... Here's where you really gotta be careful because you don't wanna lay your fuselage down on something hard. And I forgot to glue my chin block in, so I'm gonna have to do that too. T-shirts. That way it's <clears throat> at least protected. I, there's one thing I don't like. It's dings in my balsa wood. All right, now. Measure that again. Quarter inch, perfect. All right, so I'm going to basically just cut out. Well, you know, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do my lines. So that's what I'm going to start out with. Let me see if you can see that. So 
I'm gonna start right here. I'm just gonna cut this out. Probably should use a straight edge. It don't really matter because <clears throat> it's gonna be filed flat anyway. Push rod exit made. Now, since this goes in, I'm gonna kinda place that. Okay. That is Pretty darn good. So what I was doing, what I need to do, since it's coming out like that, I need to bevel this back. So I'm gonna just this will all get neatened up. back on the table and look at it. And if you really want to get technical about it, <clears throat> I'll show you what you can do. Let me pin this back down real quick. This is the kind of stuff that takes a long time. But luckily, I have a long time. I'm never in any big rush when I'm doing my build. take the push rod and I'm going to run it up into this hole here and I probably should run it through here <coughs> oh, man Now I'm going to be, I'm going to have to bend that, so let's do that.
Something, just an ever slight bend. So here's the fuselage side. You know what? I'm leaving it just like that. And I'll show you a uh, pro tip. Because I want that to look nice and clean. And here's where you gotta really be careful. Let's put those t shirts back down. Okay, I like that, so I'm gonna just kind of smooth it out a little bit. And it's barely doing anything like that. Now, I'm going to take some thin CA and I'm going to harden that edge carefully. See how it wicked into the into the uh, fuselage. Want to get that whole edge without getting it onto the outside, preferably. Okay, I'm gonna leave it just like that. I'm gonna give this a quick, just to smooth that outside before it gets hard. Let that dry a little bit. And then we'll take this rasp or permagrit needle file they sell them at Bob Violet Jets. I think that's a, I think it's the uh, website. If you were interested, I'll uh, post that in the, in the uh, comment section. But then you want to take this and just smooth it out. I'm just neatening up the hole. I mean, you don't have to get this detailed about it. But that's gonna really look nice when you only see like a little tiny hole there. Now we'll, I'm going to put that plate back up just to match it, see if it's... I wish I knew where my... what I do with that little ruler with the sandpaper on it. 
it looks good. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna be happy with that. All right, next step. Right there is the finished hole. Okay, I got the, the pins back in it. They're basically not to hold it flat, but just to hold it straight on the board. And I put these weights on here, that's gonna hold it flat. We're gonna go ahead and glue in eight, seven, six, and five. And I believe that's the next step. Yes. Okay, the next step is glue in eight. So I'll go ahead and glue that in. I want to make sure before I glue it in that everything is copacetic. Remember, it's got to be perpendicular. to the plan and flat down on the plan. And I want to see the line. And I'm only going to glue the bottom section. Down here for now. I think this Z-Bend idea is going to work out just fine. We'll find out. Place these on either side here to keep it even.
This is just pulling the sides in to the floor, basically. Try not to gouge up my sheeting. Okay. I still don't like it. Dang it. free flow right there. Okay, I like that. All right, does it want me to glue it all the way up? Let's see. <clears throat> yeah, it just says glue it to the front edge of the stab support. But I ain't doing that because I'm not gluing the stab support in. So I'm going to make sure this is perpendicular. And I'm going to pull that tailwheel thing in. What I'm doing is, yeah, I need this side needs to come in a little bit. So I'm just sanding that tailwheel platform a little bit. Yeah, it's a little. joint all 
that's close enough. Looks good to me. Let's check that again and re glue it. Looks good. So I got that in. Next is a glue in forms five, six, and seven at the locations marked on the plans. Make sure the form is a perpendicular to the building board. Pull the few slide sides together at the aft end and glue them to F8 at the stab support crutch. Okay, I ran into a <clears throat> slight snag that I gotta figure out how I'm gonna fix. As you can see, I've got the bottom half, well not the bottom half, maybe the bottom third glued up the sides. And I didn't want to go up too far because that gap here and this gap here has to be closed. Cause that former goes up against that or that doubler goes up against the former so got to rig something up because it's requiring way too much pressure to push those in but i'm going to get formers uh six and seven in before i mess with this because i may not be able to get them in after i pull that in so we'll see I'll set you up and I'll let you see what I'm going to do. So what I'm doing, I'm making sure all my farmers' numbers are facing forward. And when they're in there, when they're in there, they got to be going all the way down to the, to the floor or to the table. And they got to be perpendicular. And all I'm doing, I'm using these tabs here to push in the bottom because the, the fuselage is shaped like that. So I'm just helping push those in evenly on both sides, of course. more here and I just sand them smooth because I don't want them resting up against the fuselage all rough I could literally be here hours doing this.
I'm just making sure the fuse slide is on the plans evenly. Because you want that transition to be smooth. Warp piece. Not too bad though. Called up and ordered some more CA today. Won't see that till after the first year, obviously. <clears throat> so what I'm doing is I'm just gluing down the bottom curve. Getting the bottom curve right. Cause this curve, it's gonna it's gonna take some stuff. Find me some more scrap. These will work a little bigger. They'll work. Paste that in. I'm just getting an idea of where I need to go with this. Not very far at all.
Well, here's where we're at. I had to break out the big guns to get that glued in. I had to put some major tonnage on that to get it to glue up. And I'm afraid when I let up that uh, clamp, that it's just going to pop right off. <clears throat> I'm thinking about taking like a, a damp sponge or something and go along the fuselage sides before I start pulling these in because they're, you know, they're dry. So I think I might do that just so I, I'm not uh, putting undue stress on anything. I, I still have a straight fuse. Still looks straight. If anybody else has ran into that issue that's built this plane, stick that down in the comments. I'd like to know. Anyway, I'm going to enjoy myself a cup of coffee while I wait on stuff to dry. And then I'm going to wet the fuselage sides and get the uh, other formers glued up. See you in a minute. Uh, I think that's going to be it for episode 17. Got quite a bit done. Got all the formers glued in and uh, to the sides and everything. Got this little contraption going with the uh, clamp. And I, I wish I knew if anybody else had that issue. I know Mike, I talked to Mike Bayona, he had that same issue. So apparently, might be a flaw in the uh, plans. They don't warn you ahead of time, but. There's really nothing you can do about it. But uh, I got my push rod set up that I'm gonna do with the Z-Band. That'll be done on the next episode probably when I flip it upside down. I'm, I'm not uh, too sure because I'm not that far ahead on the plans. But uh, we'll uh, end this one and I'll see you probably after the new year. I wanna wish everybody a, a Merry Christmas. Happy New Year, and uh, if you get a bonus video in between Christmas and New Year, then that's good on you. So anyway, uh, if you like this type of content, like I said, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell so you can be notified of uh, future uploads, and like and share my videos. Till next time, thanks for watching.